How's it going, YouTube? My name is Rob McCabe. Welcome to episode three of the 10 by 10 practice challenge, where I challenge myself to practice a song, concept, or technique for 10 days, 10 minutes a day, and show you the results. If you've seen any of my videos, you know this is not about mastery. This is about showing you that even with small amounts of practice, if you plan it and you are intentional about it, it will yield very positive results. On today's episode, I am learning a simplified piano reduction of Bert Kampfert's Market Day. All right, let's dive into how I plan my practice sessions. In order to plan my practice, I use something known as SMART goals. If you would like to see a more in-depth description of SMART goals, please be sure to check out my first video, which I will also put a link in the description. You may remember, or you may already know, that SMART is an acronym. It stands for the following. S stands for specific, M stands for measurable, A stands for attainable, R stands for relevant, and T stands for time bound. Here is what I assigned to each letter based on what I wanted to accomplish for this song. S. Learn the solo at a moderate tempo with 90% or above note and rhythm accuracy. M. Measurable. I will use a metronome to determine the speed at which I am playing. A. Attainable. While I think it would likely take more time to bring this up to performance tempo, I do believe I'll be able to achieve a moderate tempo. R. Relevant. This will help me improve my sight reading and general proficiency around the piano. T. Time bound. As always, 10 minutes a day for 10 days. All right, that's it. You're about to see a short snippet from the end of each 10 minute practice session. I'll drop in every once in a while to give my comments. So the one thing you'll notice as this video goes on is that this piece has sections that are significantly more difficult than other sections. And as I was practicing and as I began sight reading this piece, that became very apparent to me. So while you can't see it in this video, one of the things that I of course did was I focused my practice time on those difficult sections as opposed to simply just playing the things that were easy uh, that is something I think that we often get caught up on is that we uh, just go back and we play the easy things without actually tackling the difficult things, where in reality what we need to do is we need to devote more of our time to, to tackling those difficult sections and then add them into the context of all of those easy sections.
so right around sort of the, like the the day six seven area that's when i really began to realize that my hands were starting to take over they were starting to have sort of a motor memory of sorts and uh i think you can kind of see that through the video that uh my hands are doing a lot of the thinking for themselves whereas Previously, not only was I making a lot of mistakes, uh, but also uh, there was a lot of hesitation in the movement and sort of where my hands and fingers were going. So anyway, I just found that interesting. So one of the things you're about to find as sort of we approach this uh, this, this this final day is that um, all of a sudden there's a huge jump in tempo. And uh, that was, you know, you know I, one could say that like, oh, I was just trying to skip ahead to like what the goal was. I was trying to get to sort of that moderate tempo um, that was part of the S of the specific part of my goal. In this particular case, really what it amounted to is... I just wanted to take the metronome off for the final day and sort of see where I was at. And this was kind of a tip that I had learned from a teacher was every now and then, yet, like, don't get me wrong, it's great to practice with the metronome. You need to do it. But every now and then, it's good to just sort of take the metronome off and just be like, okay, where am I at? And give yourself that assessment. And so that's sort of what I did on this final day.
Okay, so here are my observations on this 10 by 10 practice challenge. As you may remember, I assess myself on a four point scale. Zero to one means that I have not achieved the goal. Two means that I'm approaching the goal. Three means that I've achieved the goal or I'm on level with the goal. And four means that I have exceeded the goal. As it relates to this video, here's where I would set each level. Zero to one means that I'm nowhere close to the goal tempo, I'm falling behind, and I'm making constant mistakes. Two would mean that I'm able to play at or just behind tempo, but I still have a lot of tension or hesitation. Three means that I play on tempo, very rarely falling behind with no signs of struggle. And four is virtually flawless, ready to increase tempo and or add another level of complexity or musicality. Remember, this is in relation to the goal. It's not to compare it to anybody else trying to play this, and it's not to compare it to any standard or anything else like that. For this goal, I would give myself a three. It's not a very strong three. Um, I debated a little bit on that, as a matter of fact. However, if you look back at my goal, at my specific set of my goal, I did play it at a moderate tempo, and I did play it with very few mistakes. So where would I go with this, given time to practice it more? The number one thing that I would do is I would just increase the tempo. I would bring this up to performance tempo. The second thing, I would add uh, some musicality to it. I would uh, start bringing in the swing feel, sort of the shuffle feel of the original song. All of that said, let's watch the day one versus day 10 comparison. All right, YouTube, what do you think? What should I be practicing next? Let me know in the comments below. And what about you? What are you going to challenge yourself to practice next? What 10 by 10 challenge will you create? Tag me at Music on Instagram. Thank you for watching episode three of the 10 by 10 music challenge. Have a wonderful day.